These interviews in no way reflect the views of Arrayus Productions. This project is in no way endorsed by Arrayus Productions. As students in a continuous state of learning and frequency accretion, we each hold our own unique perspective of the teachings and how they relate to our individual experiences. It is important for viewers to remember that we are in fact self-sovereign beings with free will expression and we each carry our own perceptual filters with potential for distortion. These interviews are intended to inspire and in no way should reflect upon Iesha, Aureus Productions, or any of her work, as there is no affiliation. More information on the Alhumbra Magistracy Council of Cosmenius, the Melchizedek Cloister Emerald Order, Tantriora, Tantriasia, and the Kelantic Science can be found in the provided links below.
Okay, we're back on KS Reality Talks, and we are with Ivan Rodriguez. And I met Ivan through Rachel's podcast. So I and I just met Rachel just like a, uh, about a month or two ago, and we've been talking off and on a little. So it's really awesome to see her doing her own podcast, and we're hopefully going to be catching up soon, also on on each other's platforms. So. It's really good to meet you, Ivan. We've already got some interesting subjects to cover just from our brief conversation. Incredible, incredible synchronicity stuff here. (laughs) So we'll get right into it. We start with what you were doing right before KS, how you found KS, and kind of the lead up to it and everything. Yeah, so technically, you know, I was um, kind of in the New Age stuff, you know, the, I guess, more or less the... um, the like sacred geometry type of things and that kind of stuff but like i never really got that deep into it when i had to like do activations and like all of a sudden i started seeing things about both and you know how he was like how he did all these atrocities and whatnot and then all of a sudden i found um this page on instagram called angelic humanity which which really kind of uh, opened my eyes a lot on these subjects that are basically still transpiring to this day so that's basically how it kind of, you know, transpired from, I would say, like a year and a half or so ago. That's when it really started, you know, you know, I, I started feeling activations, you know, happen over time because of this information. Okay, so you said Toth. Was this like, when did you have a spiritual awakening? How long ago was that? I would say, well, spiritual awakening, it would be um, two and a half years ago. But then, like, I didn't really get into, like, any kind of spiritual practice till like, a year and a half ago. Oh, okay. So it's really recent for you then? Yeah. Okay. What what was your upbringing? Was it, like, religious? Were you in a church or anything like that? Well, kind of, but, like, my family was, like, never really going to church. But they were raised Catholic, so I was, I guess, raised Catholic. And, um... I guess one instance that happened when I was younger was um, I remember, you know, getting baptized and I was for some reason, you know, crying, you know, I was like panicking, like, why is this happening to me? And, you know, I mean, I don't know what happened at that point in time, but they kind of did like some sort of activation. I kind of felt or like a reversal of some sort because I, I didn't feel right afterwards. I felt, you know, really tired, very dizzy, you know, so for the most part I was Catholic and you know ever since then I've just I didn't really have a like a spiritual practice I kind of just went around many and kind of got ideas of stuff and stuff like that did you have any spiritual experiences at all like dream stuff oh yeah oh definitely they kind of yeah yeah I remember um it was a trip to Mexico we were it was like a desert it was like in the desert was at nighttime and I remember seeing like these um these lights two lights you know one in each side they were shooting like i guess laser or something like at each other that i mean that's how i described it and i was like looking at it all night through the window i'm like what's going on and i remember telling my mom you know like like do you see this and she's like no i don't see this but i'm like i'm over here like looking at it like what's going on there's a whole battle going on in the sky no one sees it but me like and and there's been a lot of other encounters as well like um one time it was at nighttime and i remember being asleep in my bed and I felt like I was getting pulled by some hands like under the bed so that was one of the scary instances that I had growing up and and there's other instances as well but I mean we can kind of get in get into that later on as it progresses yeah definitely so I usually go into like ancestral background and codings and cosmic lineage stuff have you identified any of that and like where how does it play into your 3d lines like with your mom and dad and stuff it's a big part of ks identifying these things yeah uh definitely i remember some lifetimes that started happening several months back um you know mainly aztec lineages you know basically based around the kind of um i guess this lifetime my my heritage right now so i started having a lot of activations about aztec stuff um one lifetime when I was incarnated in Saturn's moon, helping people. Um, I don't remember my appearance, but I just remember being very tall, you know, like about 11 feet or so. And and then I started kind of like looking more into the um, the kind of, you know, like race lines and stuff, you know, like you have the Bilal sons, you know, 
that kind of stuff. And then uh, over time, I, I I guess I identified mine with more or less the um, the indigo children because you know growing up, I had a lot of um, weird occurrences and. I guess you would call them like psychic powers, like foresight and stuff like that. And I, I still have that now. And my, my, I guess my mother also has that because you can kind of, you know, read people's minds and, you know, see through their actions. But overall, it's been uh, like this whole year and a half has been a very uh, tedious year, you know, trying to integrate all this information and all this new stuff coming out. So it's just trying to, you know, integrate this information thus far. So did you did you have psychic type stuff where you could tell when something was about to happen? Yeah. Were you able yeah. to give warnings? Can you give examples of any of that? Many. Uh, it was ten years ago. We were driving by this um, railroad, and all of a sudden our car turns off in the middle where the train's about to you know come, and all of a sudden I guess something tells us that you know I guess I don't know what you call that where the little um, railroad pole kind of comes down it was about to come down on us and all of a sudden i guess i guess the car just moves on its own and i was just like freaked out like what happened because you know the car was dead it turned off in the middle of the the train tracks and you know there's there's still a lot of things i have to you know integrate but that was one occurrence that still sticks out to me till this day because it was just like all of a sudden just this happened and you know i kind of got a warning like watch out you know something's about to happen and the car just moved but that's it for so far. It actually, it moved? Like the it car? moved on its own. It moved. It was like, I guess it turned off. And I guess the pole kind of, like, it was about to fall on the car, and it just moved out of the way, like, oh out of the railroads. So I'm like, what happened? Like, yeah, something lifted it and just moved it or something? I, I mean, I would describe it as levitating. It kind of was like, like, slowly, it moved on its own. Like, you could, wow. like you didn't feel the ground. Yeah, I remember that clearly till this day. Have you had any like telekinesis stuff anything that stood out to you aside from that any other things similar like that um i try to remember um or major uh, events or anything oh yeah one it was a dream i had um i guess three months ago and i actually wrote it down because i woke up all of a sudden I, and then like i remember the whole entire dream it was basically me being uh I guess I would say a founder. It was we were in sound form, and I remember I was telling this one, I guess, woman about that she was about to incarnate. I was telling her about her um, where she was going to incarnate, what time, you know, what you know, what specific race we were going to be, and that kind of stuff. I kind of gave her like the the background of what she was going to do, and I remember, you know, the appearance she had was kind of like um, sparklers. You know, like on Fourth of July, you see the little sparkles. That's kind of what she looked like when she was incarnating. And that was one dream and um, occurrence that really sticks out to me now. There's, there's been a lot, but you know, I kind of write them down because I wake up all of a sudden. I'm just like, you know, it's like activation or something, you know. Mm, definitely. Yeah. So, how has it been? You said you came in through, I believe that was Massimo's group. What was the name again? Yeah, I started seeing. Yeah, I started seeing the videos, and like, I guess the videos came to me. I wasn't really looking for the videos. They just kind of just started popping up in my Instagram feed, and I looked into it, and I was just like, you know, whoa, like, where did this information come from? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I looked more in depth, and you know, all this stuff started resonating with me. You know, I started kind of feeling like this is like legit. You know, this is the real deal. You can tell when stuff is prefabricated but this stuff it just keeps coming out and you know all this stuff makes sense for me but also I, I would assume for some people as well that are also in integrating this information there wasn't like any other were you watching any of the camelot interviews or any of the yeah i watched all of them yeah i watched uh, a lot of workshops from yasha from back then her earlier workshops like her first one like 1998 i think or 99 um yeah, all that stuff started, like, sticking to me, you know, like, huh, like, I, I think I know this. I feel like I know this mm. information. But till now, I started really, like, you know, integrating it more and more because we see it, you know, happening in, in the actual physical world. And, you know, I mean, I, like, I'm thankful for those, you know, situations I had before with the New Age stuff because it kind of led me to where I am now. It kind of, like, propelled me to higher learning of... KS teachings and 
I guess, the more recent stuff now, which is still coming out to this day. I was really appreciative of the podcast with Rachel that you had because you really, I, I mean, for how soon it's been since you've come into this, you have a really good in-depth understanding of some of the subjects, you know, like everything kind of clicked in for you. It clicked, yeah, it still yeah. does. At least with histories and everything. Like, um, why do you think that is? Like, some people are just kind of processing, takes them a while, or they're asking a lot of questions. For you, it's just like you're already conveying this. You were teaching Rachel things about these subjects. I mean, what is that? How, how do some people come in like that, <laughs> you know? Uh, some people, I would assume, had actual lifetimes in those scenarios and yeah. stuff like that. So you kind of have to go back and trust your intuition, like... You know, like, is this stuff actually valid? And you, and you have to have have to have to a discernment with this type of material because a lot of people kind of misconstrue it over time. But, um, yeah, like, it just clicked. And, you know, I started seeing the evidence. It's pretty clear that all this stuff actually happened. Well, most of this stuff that's not, you know, misconstrued by some people that are trying to put stuff out. But we can talk about that as well. Um, yeah. So and, do you feel yeah. any lifetimes that you had? You've identified yeah. things? and. Yeah. you expand on it? Like I said, the Aztec one, I remember being more or less kind of like a shaman. You know, mm. in one instance, I remember sitting in a um, in a circle, like a fire. You know, we're sitting like in a circle talking about, I wouldn't say battles, but more or less like spiritual experiences we all had as a, as a tribe or as a group. And we were, um, I remember a specific group I was, I was an Aztec jaguar. I guess the warrior class or something, but yeah, that was one that sticks out to me because it kind of, you know, I guess still resonates with, you know, my physical incarnation now since I'm kind of still related to that. But, and the other one was the Saturn one. It was on the moon. We were on the moon on Saturn. It wasn't specifically on Saturn. It was, um, I remember a slave race there. I don't know what race it was, but we were trying to like free them. They weren't in shackles or anything. They were still, you know, I guess working, and you know doing other people's bidding but they were enslaved you can tell they were like very miserable people but um i remember they captured me and i guess they kind of you know reprocessed me again and memory wiped me because you know i i just remember portions of it have you gone into some of the parallels in ks um linked in with your own experiences of these times and stuff like where what what has KS said exactly about Aztec times and the locations? Have you studied much of that and seen that? Yeah, so South America. Yeah, I've seen a lot yeah. of uh, Yeisha's work talking about how they were infiltrated and stuff, and that and that makes sense because during that time, during that lifetime, there was a lot of um. That's when the sacrifices started, like the human sacrifices, and you know, worshiping the sun god, and I guess worshiping like an incarnation of Thoth, which was the sun god at the time or the main deity. So that that's one that's one um, lifetime I actually you know really can connect to because there's still remnants of it now in some of the history that was you know I guess rewritten by the colonizers which I know it's not true some of it because I was there um, but yeah that was one of the main lifetimes and there's also other instances but I don't know if I would consider those like because I remember I guess going to parallel Earth and I don't know, it was a lot of, um, I wouldn't say arconic entities there, but there was a lot of, you know, bad stuff, like a lot of possessions going on there, parallel earth. That's what it felt like. Like, I would describe it as kind of like the um, the movie The Conjuring. That's how some of the scenario was in, in that particular point in time. It was just a lot of dread, a lot of um, darkness, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm. So I'm still trying to integrate some of like the dreams and kind of like finding the actual meanings behind them because it's still kind of, I guess, new to me because I just came in like a year and a half. Yeah. There's a lot of information I still have to, you know, integrate and learn. And, you it's know, a group try of to... you guys that just came in and took right to this, you know, it's just, it's amazing. <laughs> noticed, to yeah. <laughs> yeah you, hearing some of the other interviews, you know, people that was just clicking in. Uh, it's really cool doing these interviews because all you guys get to meet each other and hear each other's story at the same time. Yeah. And, I actually watch those. They're really interesting. A lot of these people you interviewed, are they have a lot of experiences and things that, you know, I've probably never heard before. A lot of personal experiences with different, I guess, groups and 
sex you would call them that kind of so i mean that i'm like i'm a really big fan of these interviews because it kind of brings everyone's perspectives from a different point of view from you know what they've experienced yeah, I've been talking about it, like the mosaic effect, you know, like, yeah. and I believe in that. I'm starting to believe more and more in these talks because it, it's like there's a lot of dynamics that are kind of painted in these in these stories and hearing these perspectives, stuff that we would have never considered, you know, these other other views from where people are located at, where they birthed in through and what they've been through. Just all of it is extremely relevant right now, in my opinion. And I think it's. It's going to help us get to where we need to get to a little more efficiently, I think, effectively, yeah. probably. So, it, and it's interesting how they come in, too, because I hadn't done anything for like two years. It's been absolutely silent. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> it's like back to back to back. I've got three this week, just out of nowhere. So, it's like these little clusters that, that form. And it's people that don't even know each other from around the world, different locations, and it's like a little reunion of some sorts because yeah. there has to be some there has to be something with that. I always say past life, like you guys yeah, all knew each other, like did it. something in past life, maybe or something, just to be able to witness it. It's pretty incredible. Yeah. So, what techniques have were you drawn to doing? When you came in. Uh, the Mahari Shield that was one that really stood out to me at first, and um, recently I started doing a lot of plasma. Um, yeah. What, how was the Maharic Shield for you when you first did it? Um, pretty good. I felt very um, at ease at the time I did it. I don't know how some people felt, but that's how I felt personally. But yeah, it's it's been a good experience. I've only done it like five times, I guess, during this whole time. But I've been trying to look at other techniques and, you know, how I could use those as well. Did you notice anything like bringing in the frequency and then seeing anything out picture 3D life, like some clearing? Some people experience purges or clearing. They bring in something. Oh, yeah. Uh, personally, I started seeing a lot of like muscle spasms when I do. It's just like my body starts like, you know, pulsating in a weird way that I can't really describe. But I wouldn't consider it a negative thing. It's more or less like. For me, it's kind of like old energy leaving the body, you know, some of the negative stuff. And I feel really at ease afterwards when I do it. So nothing like real thick karmic type stuff, clearing anything no, like that yet? It's kind of really. early on, too. Though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just wait. No. It's true. So did you go into flame body? Did you see any of that or any of the techniques, older stuff, aside from the heart shield? Uh, right now, I've been very discern discerning with um, some of the old stuff, trying to you know kind of piece in what happened during the split. Um, so right now, I'm just working on some of the key ones that you can use in the meantime. So what is the contrast? You said you're just getting into plasmas. Which ones are you getting into, and what's the difference between that and the Maharic Shield frequency for you? Well, the first time I did a plasma was came out like two months ago. I can't remember which one I did. So I did it at nighttime. Um, I guess the energy, you would describe it as the word I'm trying to look for. Um, one, felt more, one felt more um, more lighter than the other, I guess. So I felt like the, the frequency felt more lighter in the plasma than it did my heart shield. Lighter. Yeah, like you, more, less dense. Okay, all right. Was there any other physical things that stood out to you with the plasmas at all? What was it, Seed Adam Journey, you say? What did you do? Yeah, okay. if, if I remember correctly, it was, it was either that or something else. I can't remember the name of it on top of my head. But yeah, it was that one for sure, I think, yeah. Can you adjust the camera a little? It's muffling the mic for some reason. Kind of got a little low. Okay. Can yeah, you hear me now? a lot better. Yep. All right. So what's your take on this? Like old work, new work, old old techniques, freedom teaching, Sirius, everything? Well, right now, like I've noticed a lot of division between the old stuff and the new stuff. Some people don't want to do the older stuff because some people think it's completely compromised and 
and other people don't want to do plasmas because they think it's compromised. So it's, it's more or less kind of like a duality thing for some people. For me, it's just trying to like piece things together, trying to, you know, integrate the information between those and kind of bridge it together. Have you noticed that much, like in the groups, any um, oh, yeah. signs yeah. of the division, the split stuff? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's everywhere. It's um, in, in most of the groups I am, it's a lot of, you know, theories going around on how this happened and who is compromised and, you know, what you can do to avoid it. And, you know, right now I'm just trying to, you know, stay in my lane, you know, trying to discern and see what's, what's what, you know. <laughs> what do you feel about that? Do you think we're all going to be able to come back together or heal or do you think it's just two timelines type things? Everyone, everyone's going uh, with the resume. I think right now the times are very dense. Time, The timelines are very uh, volatile. They're, people are getting influenced into doing things they aren't, you know, in tune to doing, you know, like with this whole COVID thing going on. Um, yeah, there's a lot of division, more or less in the, in the mindsets of people. And, I mean, I could see it going on for quite some time. It, you know, it's, it's kind of like speeding up now because, you know, the other side is kind of ramping things up and trying to push people against each other. I guess that's their plan mainly. That's that's what they're trying to push for. That we fight each other instead of coming coming together and consensus of you know what's what. Have you integrated much of the latest updates? KDDL three. Have you gone into yeah, any of that? Yeah, I've been watching. Yeah. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of the, the the videos and some of the information, and you know I resonate with the with the newer stuff as well. So right now I'm just trying to, I guess you know, look into, you know, what works for me at this point in time. Because I guess it's more or less individual for, for certain people of what, what kind of information they bring in. So you're aware of the trumpets and the Metatronic timeline split that's coming out 2023, I believe? Yeah. And yeah. not to do any light body, which is basically the Mahark Shield, any of the older techniques before 2012, stuff like that. Yeah, but that's kind of one I... I mean, that's kind of the reason I did plasma first, because it was kind of advised if you do plasma, you'll be more more or less protected from those metatronic frequencies. But, yeah, I'm, I'm very aware of those situations, and there's a lot of theory jumping jumping around on those, what's going to occur, you know, like, in some cases, some people were talking about pole shift happening mm -hmm. maybe before then, and how some are preparing. From what I noticed, and some people have really been pushing towards that pole shift narrative. That's, I haven't heard much about that. I want to go into that with you, but uh, did you? Because you did the Maharic Shield first, right? When you yeah. first came in. So when yeah. you found the plasmas and discovered all this, how did you? How did it make you feel like having done light uh, body when it's advised not to do it? I mean, you didn't basically, have any bad experiences with it. No, I right? didn't. I didn't yeah. have any experiences lately. I've had some, but you know, it's not really relevant to that because I did that a while back, but. More or less now, it's more or less I kind of get like um, like psychic attacks in, in the astral realm. They kind of try to like influence me to do stuff, you know. But other obvious, than that, it's just obvious yeah. stuff you can see. Yeah, yeah. Um, other than that, no, there's there's been really no uh, negative experiences after my hard body, my hard shield. I mean, um, I've done it like five times, I believe, but. Yeah, I haven't had any negative some effects, things. any reversals or any stuff like that. I feel very stable. I mean, some people would kind of freak out about it. Like, oh, my God, I did uh, this before. I mean, I've, I mean, realizing that I've been here many times, just like, you know, just another round. <laughs> right. Trying to get out this time. Yeah. So what is the pulse stuff? I haven't heard about this. Like, where, well, where are people saying this? Uh, what groups? Uh, there's, I believe, a uh, group on Telegram that I've, that I've been on. Um, been added to lately and they they speak about very very in-depth stuff about the post shift um you know i guess like the tectonic plate movement um the the kind of um weather you're supposed to suspect in certain areas of the planet um how much how much um flooding some areas are going to get you know what type of i guess catastrophic events are going to occur during that the time so, uh I don't know because they kind of do talk about it, but at the same time they kind of like sway in and and other like stuff. Mixed, but mixed yeah, it's kind of mixed. Other. So it's just okay. like I'm trying to discern, you know, if yeah. it's like, you know. 
Right. I mean, there's so many interpretations. People get into this and, I mean, start businesses with it. And... Have you yeah, seen like the that? Yeah, the Kids Guru stuff you talked about. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it. Right. What do you feel about that? I mean, there's it shows the authenticity in it. People take just one subject or one word, J Seals or something, charge all, all this money for it. You know? Oh, it cut out. I can't hear you. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Some people are meant to be teachers in this lifetime, I believe. Um, some people are actually meant to dispense this information in their own way, but I kind of feel like a kind of a. I kind of question where that money would go in, in case something like a post shift would happen. You know, like where would that money go? Like, are you going to actually help people, you know, prepare for the post shift? Are you going to. You know, like, what if something happens? That's the question I really ask, that I want to ask those people. You know, what if? Are you going to help people? Are you going to keep the money in, you know, for yourself? Are you, are you going to be a service to others or a service to self? That's, that's basically what I'm trying to yeah, get to. Yeah. I guess, like, for all of these KS offshoots, people that have kind of started their own thing, what, there's different degrees, though. It's people that actually have businesses and then there's people that just have like zoom calls and paypal stuff you know yeah and it's like on the side things so act or kind of like activations they do for people on the phone and stuff like that but i right. mean i mean each right. to their own from what i say you know divine will you know if it's it's all up to them at this point it's um for the most part i started seeing a lot of other groups come out um i was talking to this one young man he was telling me about this one group, I guess, what was it in the West Coast called the Hathors, and you know who the Hathors oh, really? are. Yeah, the felines, the hub. Yeah, and hub, um, yeah. and they were talking about something about um, eating McDonald's meat for like his activation or something. I was just like, this ain't, this isn't them. This is either <laughs> them taking the name. Yeah, I'm, I'm being honest. Like, there's a whole to group get an on activation that. or to like. To kind Post of yeah, to get activation, eat, eat McDonald's meat. What? It makes me laugh. You gotta send me it's that. It's crazy. I need to I, I will, yeah, talk to them. Sure. There's <laughs> other one group called the I noticed called the Thirteen. I don't know what they do in particular. I don't know if you heard of that group. The Thirteen. Yeah. Uh, uh-uh, I'm not familiar with it. No. Uh, I personally believe there's some. I wouldn't say Metatronic reversal, but there's some kind of deception going on within, within that group. A lot of like a control structure trying to push people into a certain narrative without them, you know, really discerning things for themselves. It's really mixed up right now. I mean, I see bridges. I see people unintentionally bringing people into to their biogenesis. I've witnessed that, like, time and time again, actually. Coming in through Lisa Renee's group, um, yeah. getting a really good understanding of some of the chaos concepts, you know, that she's helped to present. She's done a huge outreach, more than, I think... As right press had even done. Yeah, for like sure. There's, that's there's that's huge... kind of like a division point right there, and there's a lot of controversy there. But yeah, yeah. yeah. So one thing I would um, call those people or that group of teachers are the five teachers, which was something that was brought brought up to me. And I guess you know something I would advise them is you know come together and kind of come to a consensus of you know where that money would go. Like, are you going to help people? you know prepare for certain things or help people kind of get a better understanding of things without i guess making it related to money that's that's one thing that i've been really um yeah like what's the noticing. drive you know yeah like what is like is it service itself or service to others because i kind of go against the chaos teaching being service itself right. right doesn't mix and usually people start to notice it from what i'm seeing like there's newcomers that are sharing things with me i had to start like a like like a separate kind of secret group just for us to gather and talk about the happenings that are going on in some of the groups just because it, it kept reoccurring you know that there was a few people that were almost like reporting to me and sharing with me like this is happening over here and this is a, that they were getting messages yeah. from other people and so when you're hearing that from newcomers you know that there's something that's getting back people that are just coming in and observing this you know um yeah but i feel like it kind of drives them away you know that kind of like makes them lose motivation because there's, there's certain people that are just pushing you know their point of view and they don't let those people yeah. kind of think yeah. for themselves definitely doesn't jive well with self-healing 
Like, yeah. it, it stands out like a sore thumb eventually <laughs> if, if you're really wanting to do self-healing and that's I've, I've been making videos on this stuff of my own observations and theories and stuff of what this is and more and more it is looking like there's people that come in just kind of wanting it handed to them or just they they may have came in a, a modality that was similar to that where there was a guru or somebody just kind of on a pulpit telling them what to do and do this and do that and not so much the the actual template work of going into your ancestral code your dna template and getting to know yourself your anatomy so it's interesting also like with the dramas too like there's people that just come mm. in affixed to the external dramas the split they want to know more about it like, well, what happened with her what happened with him and just like yeah yeah that's that's one of the main things right now it's uh what happened in asia you know did she fall or is uh, yeah yeah that's out there. her ex-husband lying about her or you know are they in it together it's a lot of speculation i don't like getting into speculation yeah you know, i just stay away from it and you know do my own healing that's really the whole point of chaos there's a couple different focuses it, it's getting more evident you know of what people's priorities are it's interesting to see that <laughs> yeah sadly but you know something i would advise newcomers you know like young people like myself is just to you know look at the old stuff and then the newer stuff you know see what resonates and um you know try to look deep go within first with the information because you know some people try to put a spin to it and, you know, kind of monetize the information and they had some information from other people. And that's not really what case is all about. It's the, the information I believe should be free for the most part. It should be given to everyone that is seeking that kind of spiritual knowledge and wisdom. And what do you feel about that? Like the, do you feel that the freedom teachings are, safe to watch you said you watched some of the workshops i watched them basically all the old ones off i have a whole pdf file full of the old ones i've watched most of them then the newer ones as well from may 2020 and and forward but yeah like you can tell the difference of information and you know how some of the stuff correlates and you know how some of the stuff was I guess distorted over time but you know it, it's all the sermon at the end for the individual well, I want to ask your opinion on that because recently I put a update, a group update on what we're doing in newcomers and some of my other groups with removing all of the freedom teaching videos because I was advised to do that from Arias, mm -hmm. and they, what I was told is there th there's things being transmitted in those videos in the older workshops that is not yeah. good for people potentially just coming in, you know, and trying to catch their footing and. Um, that's just kind of the dynamics right now that we're in. That's how bad it's kind of gotten. And we're learning time wave mechanics in KDDL yeah. too. So, I mean, it's all, all the math is kind of there to do to see how, well, yeah, that, that would make sense, you know, that there's stuff. And it, it's kind of like time wars right now in, in yeah. some ways, what it sounds like. What do you feel about that? Like, do you agree with that, that there shouldn't, people should, should wait and do the plasmas first before going into freedom teachings? Or what do you feel? I mean, it's it's all up to the individual what they feel like doing at that point in time because, you know, I can't tell someone not to do this since they might have the need to do it, but it's all up to the individual. But like I said, um, from, well I guess, yeah. yeah, yeah, from, I guess from the point of our, the Azerite team or whatever, um, I mean, I guess there was a infiltration that they didn't talk about at the time in the earlier, you know, before the split happened, there was a lot of, from what I heard, there was a lot of, um, I wouldn't say possessions or stuff like that, but there was a lot of, um, infiltration, people kind of, yeah, infiltration yeah. that I guess wasn't talked about for some reason. So they wouldn't, I guess, scare people to not do the activations or go to the workshops. And, you know, it's, it's prevalent now that we see the dark flower affliction being, some a big topic that's talked about now in the group so so yeah it's i guess for some people i guess if you want to go look at the videos go ahead you know you might get some activations that way but you know be aware that some of the information has been infiltrated as we know during a split so and yeah, as far as like older techniques that's very individual too you would say probably. some people yeah some people you know i've seen 
some people just push those order techniques. They don't want to touch the newer techniques because they think it's compromised and, and vice versa. You start seeing a lot of duality between groups and certain people that are, I guess, trying to make money off of just doing those techniques. Like you said, there's a lot of, it's being monetized a lot. And that's kind of what's, um, I wouldn't say corrupting the information, but it's just making it harder for people to kind of get to one, one certain point of information because a lot of people just kind of want to put their wording in of what it means instead of the actual meaning itself. I know for some people, and I've, I've witnessed this also, they needed to really kind of dissolve some mental blocks from yeah. uh, like even DNA, how DNA works, the chaos perspective of that, which is contained in the freedom teachings, a lot of DNA yeah. mechanics stuff. So they needed to grasp that before just jumping into plasma DNA template stuff. And they needed to understand that to help them ground it too. So it really is a mixed bag, you know, what people need, what their priorities are at any given time. But I'm starting to lean more towards just advising people if they really are going to go into some of these techniques, these older ones, to amp up first with the plasmas, you know. Yeah. So I, I can't with a clear conscience not say that anymore. I'm like catching myself like <laughs> when they ask it. And I didn't used to do that, you know, but now I'm like, you got to do this, you know, it's got to be careful with this stuff, you know. But just watching the old workshops for, you know, reference and trying to piece things together without doing the activations from those times, I, I think that that can be beneficial for people. But I, I feel that Arrayus is just really wanting to play it safe with this and put out the official yeah. statement that no more no more broadcasting any of this right now until we get to the split, you know, play it safe. So I feel that's what um, I guess Yeisha is doing right now. I feel like she's not speaking out because of, you know, the division or some people are going to try to use her words against her and, you know, cause more distortions within the groups and stuff like that. But, yeah. You know, like you said, um, each to their own. If you want to work on the newer or the older techniques, go ahead. Do what you feel like doing, but, you know, just be aware that there's a split. There's infiltration, and we're under occupation right now from some dark forces. What do you feel about that? Like, she's used some really big, powerful statements there that occupation and Occu that's in a big our one. governments, <laughs> and they're in our you know they're controlling they're pulling the strings right now on on all this covid's linked to that i think she she mentioned that flat out like yes it is part they of tell this. Me, it was yep. them that kind of started that too yeah it's, it's very obvious it's it's very um you know you can see it now who's pushing what narrative and you know you know who's being controlled by that narrative to convince others to, to doing such acts they're not used to doing you know like right now you started seeing a lot of uh, businesses i guess deny you know stuff to people because they're not either vaccinated or you know they're not wearing masks and, that, and that's a big controversy as well you know the mask thing that's that's kind of like a from from my perspective it's kind of like trying to put a muzzle on someone not to express themselves how they should express themselves you know naturally Do you not wear masks like out in public? What's the mandates for the city? Where are you at again? Where are you from? I'm in North Carolina. So what's it's, it like out there with all this stuff? Well, in some areas, it's very like some people are very um, unaware that, you know, this could be happening. So they try to just force you to, you know, put the put the mask on. And uh, me personally, I just I just don't like wearing it because I can't breathe and it's very hot and that kind of stuff. So I just don't wear it. Some people just look at you like this guy's crazy, you know. Like, why is he not wearing it? Like, we're told to wear. It just is there any down part of yourself that ever felt like it was protecting people from this virus? No, no. ever at all. Like this whole thing just seemed off because I talked with a man. I won't say his name because of his background, but um, he told me that the it started in Austria. The whole they were testing um, terahertz radiation lasers on people and we saw that one i guess one event would be the one in in beijing where they were attacking the protesters with with those lasers and people just dropping and convulsing that was what they call covert but it was actually terahertz radiation in the body and he kind of showed me how that happened and you know 
what applications it has on military use and everyday use for police forces and, and control groups. I haven't studied that much of it, but I heard the 5G thing is linked in with it and all these towers and Starlink, what Elon Musk just sent up, all this. Like, it's all interconnected, and of course, all the yeah. chemtrails and spraying. And... Yeah, but they've been really doing that for such a long time when some people just don't, I guess some people just overlook it, you know, like the the implications of what those things would do to the human body. And I, I feel like a lot of people aren't aware of, you know, holistic health, which I firmly believe helps people because I use that, you know, when I, I guess, get sick. I usually drink teas. I don't go to the doctors. I don't do, you know, injections and stuff like that. I usually just drink like a, you know, ginger ginger root tea with honey and lemon and I'm okay. You know, it's natural. And I feel like a lot of people aren't well informed of, of you know, the, I guess, how deep this, this whole infiltration thing works. Some people just think it's, you know, fantasy and it's Hollywood. But, I mean, we can see it now very clearly just because of the narratives people are pushing. So do you feel the, like the cell phone towers, is all that linked to this with like zapping people, the COVID, all of this is connected, like same agenda potentially? Or? I mean, I mean, think of, think of cities as circuit boards from what I've seen, you know, the comparison between them and how the, I guess the asphalt is kind of like a circuit as well. So, I feel like people just being and, and larger, you know, cities are being drained more because they're not, I guess, connected to nature because, you know, all this technology being around them and all this. Uh, what's that word I'm looking for? Um, all this Metatronic stuff they're pushing under people's nose without them noticing. And now her just openly saying that they're in power and they're here and yeah. occupied it's like man, it's green dragons versus red white dragons yeah. and, you know and it's, it's obvious because you know we have the some some uh, countries in the middle east that don't like each other for some reason and and there's uh the i guess the the queen of england and stuff like that we have a whole bunch of like different groups that have different narratives and stuff they're pushing and I mean, one thing they have in common is just dominion, for the most part. That's what it looks like. It's just dominion and trying to silence the angelic humanity groups themselves. How do you see all this playing out? Like, what what's going to happen? What's your timeline on this? Well, from what I'm seeing now, it's that, you know, they're going to keep, you know, pushing. But one thing we have to do is, I guess, come together and stop being divisive. You know, we, we can't fight over the information. We have to come together and... and kind of put our heads together and look for ideas of how we can combat this because some people are just being bamboos at this point you know they're being i wouldn't say ripped off but you know some people would, would be better off just being on their own and looking at the information on their own to really get a good idea from their point of view instead of other people's point of view so right now we just have to be more together and if anything, I have to be more discerning of of what's being pushed. You know, the narratives they're pushing against us and the whole vaccination thing. To me, it's like getting more and more like ever apparent that this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to keep us all separated. They want us on this side and the others on that side. So if if that if they're spending so much time and energy in doing this, it, it feels like we should be spending more time to just kind of put down the egos and yeah. being passionate about masks or vaccines or whatever. Just put it aside and say, okay, this person knows what they're doing for themselves, whatever. That's not going to stop me treating them as a human, you know, and not label them, them off, you know, either side of it. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's, it, it's just, yeah, it's gotten really out of hand. It's one thing after the other. It was the masks. It, it was like the, the big elections. debate on yeah yeah i mean it led up from that obviously there's uh, that was just so obvious the agenda with that the timing of that it's undeniable everything like it was kind of i guess predicted by you know the yeshas group and they were talking about a year before how it's going to get worse and we're seeing it now but yeah. you know we have to change the timeline you know if we actually want to see changes because this division isn't going to solve anything within the, our groups and stuff like that you know we're just playing into their game at this point 
How do you feel that we're going to change the timeline? What do you think? What's the solution like, in us? I feel like we should, you know, start being organic, start being self-sufficient, you know, as a communities and hopefully more people kind of fall into that, you know, being self-sufficient thing because I've noticed a lot of um, like social media and, and, and the media in general just pushing towards fast food and, you know, doing this. But, you know, what if they push towards, you know, being self-sufficient and, you know, growing organic stuff instead of just eating out and wasting money. And, you know, eventually it'll, you know, cut the funds of these companies and it'll just fall from there. So I guess we just go out, we just got to go back to our roots as individuals of how we used to live. You know, we can't live this, this lifestyle that was, you know, Metatronic. That's yeah, like Monsanto and everything. Have you kept Big up with, have you kept yeah. up with that? Like there were some lawsuits that farmers were, Make, following Bill against Gates. Monsanto. Yeah, Bill Gates, Gates yep, supposedly yep. buying all this land, you know, across right. the whole planet because, you know, due to all his influence and it's under people's noses. They just look at it like, oh, just Bill Gates, you know, doing humanitarian stuff. But mm -hmm. behind all that is, is a narrative that we can see and hear about on a daily basis. You see it getting exposed also, like pe more people waking up to make the change necessary. Mm -hmm. You think that it's more people falling asleep? It's 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 kind of like a kind of like a roller coaster. Um, yeah. Some people are waking up at the same time. Some people are just buying into the narratives and stuff like that. And you know, like they don't like they don't give these these things a second thought. Like you know, what if this is true? You know, what if you know we're being tricked into you no know, into this um, transhumanism agenda they're more or less pushing. And 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 there's a funny thing that um, I was in this person's uh, page. And this person looks very, you know, inorganic. I would say more or less like an android. And people are just, like, praising this person, you know. No, but I can send you a link of that person so you can see it for yourself. Because I don't know how this is going on in people's noses, you know. <laughs> They're just pushing this transhumanism so much that, you know, through you the explain? whole... Looking like an android, like what? Uh, I've noticed some people in the... Los Angeles areas that look very AI like they don't look you know human they look very inorganic they move very inorganic and um, I can give you some some pages and some people to look at so you can see for yourself what I mean because they're doing it under our noses and we're not even you know questioning it and, like, they've been talking about it for decades how they're gonna modify you know the human genome to turn us more into like a hive mind you know like in 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 like uh, Star Trek where you can see like the Borg so they're trying to just just do like predictive programming over time to convince people that this is the way to live you know being a uh, connecting your mind to like the cloud and experiencing your consciousness consciousness and organic have you studied the Mandela effect that much what do you feel about that that's uh, it, it's very it's very apparent because you know, I've read, you know, the whole Nelson Mandela thing, and I actually thought he was dead because I saw it on TV that he was dead. Right. All of a sudden, I see him come out of jail. Yeah, and like, I remember you know, it, too. Yeah. I mean, like, then they talk about he died at this time. They had his casket. I was like, what? Like, who are they, you know, who are they trying to? I feel like that's more or less like timeline shifting and, uh, you know, just a lot of. Uh, trying to change our past. Stuff. Trying yeah, to like, change our past. Stuff. They're, they're pushing. I mean, if they can change just even little things and try to get control of that, then they uh, they can derail a lot of quantum doing that. You know, yeah. we lose even some bits of it. I mean, it starts with our memories too. Yeah. There are certain people that remember certain groups. Of people remember the Berenstein Bears that being spelled this yeah. way. <laughs> you remember that's where I first saw it. So it's yeah, just kind of little subtleties first, and then they can creep in and change larger things potentially. Yeah, but I mean, like we gotta look at it as um, you know, these people have a lot of resources to do these things. They've always really had a control structure to fall behind, and um, you know, us, we kind of came in amnesic. You know, like who are we? You know, like like we're trying to find out who we are, but they're leading us to like these these different paths, which lead down to 
you know, us going to Phantom and eventually the Visa Deck Matrix and stuff like that. So that's basically their their agendas. They're just trying to feed off of us, you know, our conscience, our soul essence and whatnot. So much energy they spend towards these campaigns, you know, they got think tanks and stuff and they're all getting together and like how did how does a human think with this or with that? Just like you think about how much energy they extend towards <laughs> trying to get us all the time these ahas gotcha stuff you know it's and <laughs> yeah we have a choice with uh to play along with it or just kind of back up a little and see the whole whole picture here of what we're doing with our life and how you know how what what's so important about us that they're going to try to they're trying to do all this stuff you know to even ask these questions because sure. it's a lot it's really out of balance like it wouldn't <laughs> yeah. take too much of us to wake up and just like see that and it's like wait a second i'm not going to feed it anymore and it's kind of lopsided yeah like there's a lot of um, implants and stuff and you know when we are incarnated in this physical form you know we have some people have jehovian seals because the planet planet also had jehovian seals and other kind of implants you know from from what I've seen, I think uh, like religions are being used as like um, holographic inserts. They try to push this information, you know, firmly into people's heads that this this is how it worked, and you shouldn't question it. Um, yeah, and I see, I see, I see about that. holographic yeah, inserts. Like to give some examples of that. You had some really good ones inserts. with Rachel. Yeah, 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 that's one of the things I want to touch on. Um, I guess holographic inserts you would describe it as frequency going into your dna to create to externally create a certain um scenario from happening you know so like like i gave one and in, in that podcast was 9 11 that some people on tv saw this happen but the people on the ground were describing it differently you know and you can tell that it's not a normal happening and and, I, and from what i read in, in the old um in the voyager's book is how the whole 9-11 thing happened in the first place they were firing up um what are they called um i guess frequency is that's the best way to describe it you know through ley lines and stuff like that to try to it was more or less like a um a triple agent invasion for my describe because you see have the green dragons that were you know planning to attack the red white dragons and all of a sudden you know, the, this other group just comes in and, you know, messes everything up for them. So it's more or less like a, a whole game. You know, they're trying to survive and, you know, they're trying to take everyone with us as well. At this point, they're just trying to feed. And if we can see it now, how they're trying to push towards vaccinations and, you know, just giving away your power. That's that's basically the what I'm trying to touch on is they're just trying to tell people to give away their power to external entities, you know, like big pharmaceutical companies you know and people don't question that stuff so what do you see the outcome with all this i guess you can just speak for yourself but what do you feel like the collective is going to move into right now you think after the split it's going to ease up and everything's going to get a little better like how what kind of what what ks is saying right now oh it's going to be more or less like a like a progressive thing i don't think there's going to be like this side goes this way and this side goes that way it's more or less like um you know over time you start waking up more into you know dna activations and i've i've been noticing it a lot with 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 women nowadays so they're doing a lot of astrology and working with crystals so i guess it's waking up certain groups but at the same time it's really uh keeping other groups at bay you know a lot of new age stuff is kind of uh becoming very apparent now with the whole Corey, the whole Corey good thing and David Wilcock, which I can speak on because yeah. that same guy that told me about, you know, the terror hurt stuff met Corey good in Arizona. He worked in one of those labs that Corey good, Corey good was in. And he told me straight up that Corey good was, you know, cloned a couple of times and he was age regressed. Like straight up told me one day we were on the phone talking about this stuff because, you know, the, there's a lot of um, guys that say they were doing this, but at at some point, you know, there 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 has to be 
there has to be like a level of questioning of what what really transpired. Well, didn't Corey Good say that that's what happened to him? Yeah, he's part but of the one thing. Yeah, but one thing that was told to me was that Corey Good was not in any of those labs. Like he said, he was, and okay, because right. he worked in one of those labs so in New Mexico. Type of disinformation agent you, type deal. Yeah. Look, that's what it appears like. Because most of what they push is, you know, that the, I guess the draconians were some draconians were good, and you know the flower of life is good, and you know this kind of gloom and doom type stuff is what I've seen last year. They were pushing with 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 their movie that came out. And and there's some truth truth to the the information, but most of it is, I guess, keeping people away from what actually happened. I don't know if you saw Mark Gibbs' interview yet. Did you catch that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. Did you hear what he said about the the inner Earth people and the logos they're wearing around their necks, the Saturn? Yeah, they wear like the yeah, yeah. That pretty much says it all, right? The symbols. I feel like he has been implanted heavily. Corey Good and maybe David Wilcock because he said he was um, an abductee by some groups, whatever, over his childhood and and that kind of stuff. So what what are you seeing with this vaccine? Do you think is it zombie apocalypse? Everybody gets a, the vaccine. What do you feel? <laughs> That's one thing people are pushing right now. Is just oh, if you take this, you're being you're more than likely going to be a zombie. And, and there's just a lot of fear stuff right now. Like let's, let's kind of like put our heads together and, and, and look at, you know, the facts, you know, yes, it's, it's been said that it messes with RNA of a individual and that there's nanotech in some of that stuff, but you know, it's not far fetched that they could, you know, mutate the body so much where they give zombie like effects. But, you know, let's let's just right now take things that one step at a time and analyze what they're trying to do, because we can't get too far ahead of ourselves and, you know, assume things. So for the most part, you think that, I mean, it's going to be different for everyone, I guess, the extent of what agenda they may or may not be trying to play out through the vaccine. But you feel that we're protected from it on some level? There's enough frequency here to kind of override some of it on the DNA level? Do you agree with that? Um, yeah, for the most part, yeah, I see that there's some level of protection because I would assume the Guardian saw something like a, I guess, like a contingency plan for, you know, if this would have happened and, and how we could reverse those effects on, on the human body. Because some people are like just straight up falling and you know dying from this from this thing yeah so I, I guess it affects people differently depending on their you know their dna and what kind of stuff they have internally right. it's even here in some that this was kind of arranged on some level as like in um type of evac or bardo wave of people that were just not going to be able to keep up with the earth activations and just have a route to get out type thing you know, leave together, go back to their systems where it's more resonant. I've heard that theory too. That's a trope. Yeah, Think yeah, about, that's, yeah, I've heard that um, in one of the groups that we're talking about that, and, and you know, it makes sense. It really, kind of adds up to it. But right now, you know, we see we were under occupation, like he said back then, in 2000, 2020, or last year, and we were under occupation. And it's obvious, but you know, we can't discredit that that theory as well. We can we can just think about it as well, like oh that that might be the case as well. Yeah, there's just so much, and a lot of people are really kind of waiting on her to come back to talk more on it. Like, yeah, it's what do you feel with that? Are you kind of hanging on cliffhanger type thing with this? No. Or what do you feel? Just right now, just trying to stay on zero point, just relaxing, just being in nature, you no know, exercising, just that that stuff that'll help you know your physical body you know stay healthy and whatnot and eat healthy that's basically what i'm doing personally i don't know what other people are doing but yeah, that's just me it's been a big focus to get yeah. away from the chemicals because it's obvious now there's some agenda with all these chemicals and junk in the food and even the hand sanitizer and the estrogen campaigns to try to emasculate men stuff that's 
that's starting to stand out to me. I've been seeing some of that. Just, yeah, the soy products or the vegan movement even. <laughs> All these things are just kind of, it's undeniable after a while. You see the domino effect here. So what are you feeling yeah. with the recent activations? Like, are you noticing all this? You've been able to sleep, anything different? <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's what, that's been a problem. Like, I don't know if you noticed that, like I've been staying up late. I can't just like sleep anymore. Just I stay up for some reason and, you know, try to, you know, integrate more information while I'm doing that. I just don't waste the time. I just try to look for more information and learn more new stuff in the KS community and also interact with people. So has it, it's been really noticeable for you, like a, recently, with sleep and energy yeah. level stuff changing? Yeah, like me personally, like they've. I feel like they sent like some attacks, some psychic attacks or whatever. Usually, when there's like a uh, solar flare or something like that, I don't know if it's coinciding with oh, yeah. a certain uh, event, but yeah, just like I feel very like shaky you know i'm not you know very centered yeah it's a trip now you can actually check the schumann resonance and like <laughs> see which days that happen where you felt the activation of something and you go back and check the date and it's like wow i felt that you know yeah, yeah i felt that way um i mean one other thing that 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 really stood out like i've talked in the beginning of this podcast was about the men in black and you know how they came all of a sudden they just you know just came in and just one 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 word or a couple words to describe them is just watchers because all they did was watch they couldn't really get near me or my morphogenetic field or any of that they were just like watching and observing what's you know who's there and i guess trying to i guess get a head count of you know people that are activated or not well let's back up a little bit so what is okay so what does ks say about the men in black because a lot of there might be some people They're, watching this thinking of, of Will Smith and the movies yeah, and all the this movie stuff. Hollywood. <laughs> what what is KS saying about this? Uh, KS, they're basically the Necromind and Dramis or the Beetle people from Wiesadek. Basically, what it's kind of pointing towards. And what is what is that? Is it like Fallen? Or yeah, they're Fallen group, right? Yeah, that's just fallen at this point. Like we said, like, that whole matrix is, you know, completely like history to that. corrupted. Like this, that whole place is just like overrun with with metatronic frequency. And I guess what is their particular agenda here? Uh, what are they doing? Well, those well that particular group is um, allied with the current occupators, which are the Fatali. So both of them are very genocidal very um divisive that's basically their thing and right now we're seeing that you know collaboration and right now um during this whole hosting you know procedure we've seen some people change that were maybe from a different fallen group trying to come into biogenesis and fix their dna so, so it's it's, 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 a, it's like a mix kind of like a good thing yeah mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting subject right now. I mean, even the Zetas, like her own abduction experience, she, <laughs> Yesha, she was abducted by this one group of Zetas, and then the abduction started to stop, and she was approached by another, this hybrid Zeta that looked kind of like a, a child, a human child or something, approached her and said that, okay, the abductions are going to stop now, and this treaty, and I think that was around the time the Treaty of Albion, or one of the treaties where they called a truce, you know, and they just stopped everything. I think it was 90, uh, forget the dates. Altair, I think. Altair or something. Yeah, like that. one of the ones where they were all working in unison, a little brief window of <laughs> one of these treaties bef- before the betrayals, right? Yeah. And so, the, yeah. Yeah, so it's, I mean, we're kind of entering that again, and with what she's saying with. And I don't know. I don't think she said there's been formal treaties or anything like that. I don't know if there's been time to to do that. But it, it feels like it, there is hints of like redemption stuff that's happening. Where it, it is, really is last call, and it's starting to dawn on some of these groups that this is it. Like if we're gonna go back, if we if we want to retain any level of connection, 
to God's source to, to come back, now's the time. It's either go back to their home systems or try to get back on biogenesis, you know. It's been kind of a push for that. Um, are you seeing any of this politically or externally in your world? Any stuff, any signs of the, um, how, how it's going, I guess? Um, from the most part, you're seeing a lot of these political groups kind of like banding together or I guess some governments are kind of like banding together to push the vaccine agenda, which is, I guess, the same narrative they're all pushing at this point. But there's some people, I guess, I think there was like a president of Africa that was like speaking out against it and he was assassinated like a couple months ago, or like last month, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. So there's some people that are in power that are trying to, you know, like protect their their populace. But for the most part, um, you know, anyone that speaks out is silenced. What was the country that never went into lockdown? Was that Sweden or Poland? I'm trying to think which one. They did herd immunity type thing. Uh, was it Switzerland or Sweden? It was one of those countries over there. Yeah, it was one of them. That was interesting. It's like they just stayed yeah. out of the whole thing. You know, what's going on over there with those leaders? They didn't go along with the agenda. They didn't go along yeah. with it. Yeah. So I didn't study too far into it. I don't know. I thought it there was, was interesting. Uh, some states here too that were, you yeah. know, oh South Dakota, right? Yeah, like Florida. look what's happening. There's nothing there, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and even here locally, our mayor has been kind of making a push. I mean, Colorado Springs, Colorado, and he's kind of taken on Polis, the governor, in saying that he wants more transparency in the numbers, and they're not releasing it. So he's calling them out on that, which is yeah. good. There needs to be more of that. And I know the South Dakota governor. Her, Nomi, no, <laughs> her name yeah. is an interesting name. Like she hasn't, she hasn't budged on anything. She was catching a lot of criticism for that too. Mainstream news were just saying, "Oh, yeah. it's it's going to be death and all this." The and, highest ratings of the whole country because they're not masked. Yeah. And, I mean, it's just a whole narrative they're pushing. And I mean, one thing that I want to see exposed is the PCR tests that were also brought brought up to me of how they're, you know, the procedure behind the P PCR tests that are made, the basic, the, the COVID tests that are mainly used what is and PCR? how they, and how they can't run if there's no AC in the facility. So, so that's so basically they'll come out positive if there's no AC. What is PCR? I'm not understanding the language, a AC and PCR. No, no, no. I mean, the PCR. I just can't remember the whole like scientific name, but that's the that's the test, the COVID test they use to to see test. COVID or something. Yeah. Okay. So they're not being transparent about even the tests. Mm, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. So if if so, what I was told, because one guy actually made his own PC PCR lab. That same guy that I was telling you about, he made his own PCR lab, and out of I think a hundred people that he did, ninety nine came out positive, even though. You know, no one got tested. It was just all BS. Right. I've heard people catching COVID from the test itself, even. Like there's some side effects that you know they they subject subjected me to at my job. Like last year, they made me take it, and it was just like I have side effects still. Um, for the most part, I can't really. In the eyeball, eye socket deal. Uh, more or less like the nasal area. I can't really smell certain scents anymore just kind of like damaged like it's bad i mean i can taste but i can't smell certain things like there's just some things i can't really smell like gasoline or or any kind of meats i can't really smell them or differentiate oh them so right now i'm just trying to get that you know cleared out that implant i would assume is kind of like a nanotech or something implant with the ones behind the eye socket i heard that was the implant too like there's something on the end of it and they're because it's real close to the oh. the brain, the membrane there. I think it's called like more 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 gallons or something like that. It's little fibers, right. yeah. nanotech fibers yeah. that kind of go inside, and you can't really see them. In some cases, I heard they're also inside the mask, the, the cloth mask. They try to get people to buy and stuff like that. So that's one thing as well. And everything is so com compartmentalized in our country with all these different companies that had to work together really quickly that it wouldn't be too far off for something to get thrown in there you know yeah the manufacturing and they don't talk to each other they're all just like there's like a trust there where, okay they're doing their job and they're doing their job type thing you don't even I know mean, I'm, yeah like i'm pretty sure it's planned out you know very meticulously between their corporations you know like 
and, and I mean, uh, like, like they've been pushing a lot of um, like digital currencies and stuff like that. And you no, know, I was also invited to be part of the financial reset a year ago, and that's one thing I've been quiet about because you know it's dangerous <laughs> for the most part. Not able to expand much more on that. The I reset. Could, I could talk about it, but you know, <laughs> just to it's too much. Uh, okay. Uh, for the most part, yes, there was a, there is a financial reset that was in the works since the '90s, from what I was told. Um, it's it's more or less like quantum computer based. It's not really this type of monetary system. Is more or less like quantum computer related, where all the currency is backed by physical assets, gold and copper and silver and stuff like that. So that's one thing they were pushing, and I think they've already made the new currencies and new paper currencies for them uh, and and there's a lot of history behind that it's just like they have a lot of a lot of companies already have these oil contracts for 20 years where they can you know do what they want so all these companies kind of like come together and buy oil for several decades already using s certain currencies like zimbabwe's and uh these currencies like you don't even hear about that have a lot of value what about the crypto thing? What do you feel about that? It could be used as a double-edged sword. I feel like it's yeah. some people are very like benefiting on it right now. A lot of um, you know people are earning some good money from it. But one thing you got to think about is like who who runs it. You know who came up with that idea of digitalizing? Even the internet currencies. itself. There's people because we got Signal, Telegram, WhatsApp. All these uh, some of them are supposed to be encrypted. Right. Yeah, but no, my opinion, really the internet itself's got a backdoor. If it, it, I don't think it was like a. I think it was. It was probably an FA invention type thing. It was used by the Navy, by the U.S. Navy, I think, before sure. introduced to the public and all these companies. And I think that was just like for corporate reasons that they went public with it. So. For sure. Anything that comes out that's presented to us, you can pretty much guarantee it's got a back door to it. So it's, just, I mean, but people feel safer, and I guess that's energetic which platform they're talking on. I've started groups on some of these Telegram and Signal and stuff. So, what direction do you see the group of KS going? How do you see humanity in the future with KS? Will it become mainstream or always remain out of public's eye? I mean, that's a good question uh, that I've always pondered myself. Um, you know, should it be mainstream or, you know, should it be kept where, I guess, you come towards it? It doesn't really get presented to you on a, on a larger scale. I feel like, uh, I guess the more secretive it is, the the less dangerous it is. Not because the dangerous means that it's bad for you. It's more or less that there's a lot of history behind it that will just kind of traumatize you. And it, it wouldn't let you think straight and whatnot. Do you think that it should be mainstreamed? Uh, at this point, no. Very volatile. Mm -hmm. Like it's too much. It would be yeah, too it's much. Too much for the the people that haven't really activated yet in, in a certain way. Do you feel that there's other groups or religions that are working in unison, frequency-wise, like with what we're doing, biogenesis, anchoring frequencies, and stuff? Oh, I believe there is some that are doing it under, you know under public eye and there's some that are working against it obviously like i said like i've um, named some groups that are you know kind of doing their thing and activations of some sort that kind of you know don't ring a bell to me because it just sounds like a control dogma like they've been really pushing for the past you know millennia or so so right now it's just very it's a very volatile time she's mentioned that groups. there was other group she was told that there was other groups on the planet doing this stuff but they yeah they haven't been disclosed or anything yet haven't been identified so it's interesting for sure i know, I know there's some in middle east i believe yeah i always felt the monks like tibetan monks buddhists like over there like they're just holding something is that's a long tradition they've been doing that even with sounds and these temples yeah, for sure. I see that as well. Um, a lot of uh, native, you know, communities kind of have their secrets as well. They kind of hid away from public eye because 
I mean, most of those people were colonized, you know, a while back, and they don't want some of the secrets falling into the wrong hands, like, you know, like um, the Aztecs and the Incas and some of the stuff they exploited from them. So what are your views on the recent 2012 shield split? Like, just seeing this whole thing, just um, coming into it. Yeah, it's a very um, controversial topic for some people that are very firm believers that, you know, some people were subjected to the dark flowering process and uh, that they can't be trusted anymore and that they shouldn't be, you know, viewed as, I guess, speakers or whatever you want to call them. But, um, yeah, that, that's, it's been a lot of division ever since. It's been picking up since a lot of political stuff is tied into that. Um, and just very, like, I think all these things intertwine, like the whole political game, the whole... Eight-year-olds. Yeah. Like, things outpicture eight years after we experience it in the shield. All the frequency that comes in. I thought that was an interesting concept, too. Yeah. I like that. It's kind of like a ripple effect, like all this stuff happening is kind of like rippling, you know, through the years. And some people feel it, you know, more intense than than back then. But, you know, it just depends on, you know, how activated you were during that point in time. So you said that you studied some on KDDL3. Have you gone much into like the happy bubble and the host thing and Earth basically trans we're transmigrating, translocating yeah, right now outside of the solar system? Down. Like, yeah. none of the planets are going, just pockets around the galaxy no are going. Earth, something like that, yeah. Yeah. I've kind yeah. of, yeah, I've kind of heard of, of that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, right right now I've been focusing on that portion of, of this whole journey, the whole hosting thing and how we're hosting by another matrix because ours is in a false state that, you know, it's really dire right now for, for this time matrix. So we have to go to another one because it's... Just a lot of metatronic interference going on. It's just crazy to think about how it's going to outpicture. And it feels like it's coming up in 2023 because if it's like all these happy bubbles. We're going to have our own happy bubble. The planet has a happy bubble. And it's none of the planets around us. The sun's in Bardo right now, so it's not... Yeah, Bardo rings. It's... You know, how, what is this going to look like? What in the world? It, it was 900 years, and it feels like even that has changed. Like, it's just going faster. <laughs> That's all up. Yeah, the whole process is just, like, you know, speeding up to to a point where some people can't really handle it. Right. You know, the information, and they just kind of, like, freak out and go into, like, this fear mode and start assuming things are going to happen. But right now, we just have to stay centered as a whole collective, you know, awaken beings and hopefully help activate other people that we you know you know are need to be activated and it's like the shift and sift thing you know people able to keep up with the frequencies other ones kind of sifting off going back to where it's more resonant yeah i mean we're seeing that we're just it, it's becoming evident now more so coming up to for sure what is your definition of hosting Hosting, uh, I see it more as like, um, you know, someone kind of like guiding you towards a a path of, you know, higher knowing, you know, more a different perspective of things. That's kind of what I see hosting. It's like we're being brought to new a new perspective of of existence through this whole uh, Crystal River failsafe process. Can you? It's, it's, what? What has it meant for you? Like, to, do you feel like you're on a host? And what is that experience like? Like in the Crystal River Prayer, um, yeah. I think the word host is in there, and we're calling yeah. on all these councils and guardians. Like, what is what's what's this been like for you? Um, I actually done the Crystal River Prayer. I actually um, I like listen to it before I go to sleep, and it's very uh, it gives me a lot of energy before I go to sleep. A lot of uh, vivid dreams that I have afterwards. Um, but I feel like it's very beneficial for me personally that this whole process is happening because, you know, the whole split thing was a massive change for some people that wasn't expected, you know, especially within the Arheas group. 
And, you know, I see it as a positive thing that is going to keep, you know, hopefully getting more positive over time for the collective as a whole. Have you experienced, like, um, is symptoms or more stability since starting to resonate with the host? You feel like you're, like, anchored in? And what's life been like with that? I just feel very just centered. Like, I don't really freak out over any other stuff. You know, some people are, like, pushing this division thing. But I'm just, like, in the, in the middle just, like, watching, you know, some people and, and their actions and stuff like that. That's just me. Like, I don't really like to get into controversy with, with other people. You know, I just stay in my lane for the most part. Mm-hmm. All right. So the Alhumbra have been, like, kind of a controversial ET group council. Yeah. And we had the this DNA bonding, which was the bonding to the DNA plasma template, the seed atom journey, which you've done. Yeah. And there's kind of different perspectives of this and I like to tap into this in the interviews to, to see what people are seeing with this. So when it comes to like these ET councils coming in, offering assistance and things, do you feel that there's, do do you feel like it's your own connection to them or do you feel like it's kind of outside and you're starting to integrate who they are and connect with them what is what is your experience with them this kind of has to do with the hosting thing too yeah uh, yeah, yeah yeah for sure um it's more or less like a personal thing for me because you know we do all these activations that are more recent that kind of tie in that oh the different councils and whatnot but um some people view it as i guess external help and for me it's just more internal like me connecting myself and getting all these frequencies So is it, would you say it's kind of like connect, remembering more of yourself, connecting with yourself to like host yourself type yeah. thing? You're just a higher self or something, expanding? Yeah, different parts of myself. I mean, from some people know there's 1,728 parts of yourself within the time matrix. So, yeah, so there's definitely a higher knowing, you know, playing out within yourself, you know, higher parts of you have more activations and stuff like that so i try to just connect more with myself and and integrating affirmation over time you know the more i learn about different activations and how they can help either take away you know like releasing traumas and 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 that's a big thing the trauma thing that some people are having a hard time with because that's what kind of causes the vision now is the trauma-based you know matrixes they live in everything is rooted in trauma any type of like even even the ego and superiority complexes and stuff and some of the groups all of it is is rooted from trauma of just like trying to be accepted and trying to fill in that void and trying to fit in i mean it's the lack of all of it's just all of it you could safely say that all of it leads back to trauma any any of these dysfunctionalities that we're seeing things which really kind of changes the perspective you don't get too caught up in it because we all have trauma we could all relate to that like oh man they're hurting you know i mean as a collective we can kind of feel traumas yeah we're going through all these traumas you know and some people are having a very difficult time trying to express themselves and and how, and, and how to deal with these traumas, you know, because some people have, I guess, certain dreams that kind of like trigger them. And, and some of these activations might also trigger their memories and other parts of themselves in different lives. So it's more or less kind of like just trying to, you know, ha- be patient with people, you know, trying to just, you know, be understanding that, you know, not everyone's in the, in the same boat. Not everyone's going to be believing the same things and, you know, just be accepting of you know other people's perspectives without judging them and putting them in a whole different category that they're superior or inferior yeah i've I've made these videos kind of calling out some of the behaviors and things that i've noticed with the ks gurus thing but to be honest i mean it really is moving into just being both and it's almost like i don't really even need to engage too much in that because there's so many people i would have never met if it wasn't for these these groups and 
people that are doing these things, even behind the scenes activities they're doing, I don't resonate with. Well, still they offered a platform for all these amazing people to come in that I get to meet now, you know, and it's, it, it's been that way since really seeing Lisa Renee and all the dynamics with that too, because I totally yeah. didn't resonate with how she came out with her business, any of that. I pretty much have called it plagiarism just flat out. I've been very vocal <laughs> yeah, about what, it. A yeah. After hearing old timer KSer share with me firsthand, seeing her attend the Almonty series and just take notes and not talk to anyone, just disappear, you know, and just take off and then all of a sudden come out with her own material, say that it's Guardian and that she has her own line and like what in the world? So after hearing that it made a bigger impact on my impression of her, you know, of hearing first hand accounts and stuff. And just wanting to expose it. Like, okay, you just came in from Lisa Renee, here's who Lisa Renee is. You know, and just showing people. But, yeah, it's... yeah. But some people are I I have made videos on this too. It feels like some people are actually kinda of keyed in to these types of shields like maybe a lisa renee shield and it's like a family type thing and and they just they'll see ks they'll see all the core mechanics everything that iesha has offered and it's still not click you know and they just yeah. really resonate with with her group and i'm seeing other groups kind of pop up in the same type of theme where it's just like maybe it is a family shield or a tribal shield or something that's come back where they need somebody there that's kind of holding an energy or space for them that they're keyed into, you know, that personable. Yeah. I don't know. But like me, like, I don't like, you know, judging people, you know, putting them, you know, in, in categories and stuff. I just trying to like stay in a neutral point and hearing, you know, what they bring. Cause there was a whole, you know, lawsuit, I think with Lisa and Renee and the Arheas group. And, you know, some people really like, you know, Lisa and Rain, some people really like Eisha's material. And right now, we just got to, like, stay centered, you know, but, you know, take what resonates. You know, that's one of the things I try to always tell people, take what resonates. Don't, you know, go on what I say. You know, you do it yourself and you experiment with this stuff. And if you like it, you know, good. If not, then, you know, like, you could always walk away. What has been the most challenging part following the teaching so far? Yeah, uh, the most um, challenging is, um, I guess, the 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 all these uh, different subjects and historical events that are really, I guess, important from the past and even from the present time is just trying to integrate, you know, all that history and also being discerning of some of that history that was given to speakers and whatnot because you know i have a feeling that you know there's some disinformation maybe for our own good because some of that the full story might be too dangerous for us at the time because maybe we're not activated enough or maybe we we won't understand the full picture in this physical incarnation it's just more or less just being discerning of whatever information comes across and how you can benefit or not benefit from it almost like a timing thing also yeah like yeah for sure thing. what is the most joyful part of the teachings i mean everything since i came across them was just like you know i was like thrilled i'm, I'm still like thrilled to learn new things like new material new you know words and stuff like that it's just very it's like a it's like a it's like an adventure for me just like always being being a student to teachings and you know since i found them to be very beneficial i've always been very observant of you know how helpful they are to other people as well because you know they've 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 activated a part of me that i can't you know really fathom I'm still still trying to like put together all this information that just came to me you know like a year and a half ago yeah. so it's, it's just a lot of overwhelming stuff right now just a lot of emotional stuff that you know some that i personally try to work with like my emotional body trying to you know work on that a lot uh that yeah you said you've been watching some workshops what particular era of the work are you drawn to right now the workshops right now it's just more or less of the newer stuff the the plasma work and you know okay. the, none of the, the older you haven't been watching in the older workshops i've watched the old ones so many times that they just kind of like 
I mean, oh, I you've already just remember. You've already studied. Yeah. Uh, I've dance studied force the, series, yeah, sliders, the any? Uh, the sliders, somewhat. That's I think that's one thing I need to really touch on. But I I have them. I think uh, some files on them. Mm-hmm. I just need to kind of go back to those. Everything's out there now. It's just accessible. Yeah. It's awesome. Just to hear the. Uh, it used to be just people always trying to find the material, and we're past that now. It's it's there. It's definitely available. It's externalized, which means yeah. everything else is externalized. If these teachings are available now, it's kind of this is it. Like we're we're here. How do you apply chaos to your daily three D life? Do you do prayers techniques daily? How do you integrate chaos into three D life? Three D life. Um, you know, one way to describe it would be to. No, I try to just, you know, stay centered. That's that's always my my focal point. Just like stay in zero point. Try to just relax. Try to just you know study these things. You know, at a at a at the right timing. And you know, when you say beneficial, I, I really think of more or less, you know, how I've progressed. You know, through the whole journey. Like I just look back and and see, wow, like I didn't know this stuff before, but now I'm over here. You know, talking about it. Like right now, I'm just like, you know, how did I? All of a sudden, just click with this information and, you know, just keep learning and having that drive to learn more stuff and and go back home. That's what everyone wants, you know, I would assume, just go back home. Are you doing any daily techniques? you do the prayer daily? Anything that... Crystal that repair, I, I try to do it uh, in the nighttime. Um, routinely. My heart excel, I kind of stayed away, yeah, routinely. Um, plasmas, I've started getting more into plasmas. Certain, like, certain in general, but right now I'm just trying to like experiment which ones are working, and, and yeah. I remember when I first came in, it's 2010, into the group, and I did the, it was the old KRP, it's changed now, they took out the banishing part, and this it's kind of come up too, it's interesting, like it doesn't need to be this authoritative like clearing stuff out anymore. Um, when I did that, I did it for probably about a, a month, less than a month i'd say and there was some major changes that were just starting to pop up from the past things things that were unresolved came up just it was it was undeniable you know it's things with my family my son with my ex all these unresolved things from years and years ago that just like opening up opening up the drains you know just everything coming back online communicating again so that was my experience with it so I know that there was like some kind of platform that I'd reached with that, and I had it memorized. You know, I, I really integrated it, really wanted it, really resonated with it. So yeah, the prayer is really powerful. Yeah, and there's a lot of like songs and stuff like that you can some people can hear and that are very powerful as well. Just the yeah. just the language itself, yeah. Yeah. just kind of like opens, you know, like a part of you that 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 i guess you didn't know was there you know like some of the some remembrance is what i like to describe it as it's all the family names those are all the guardian names so i mean more than likely you're going to read off something that's close to home that you might carry you know some ping some codes off or something you know for sure some of the names might resonate more than other ones and tune into it what has been the most oh go ahead I guess that's the beauty of it. I mean, from what I see, it's just that the I guess like the remembrance part. You know, once you're activating and and stuff like that. Yeah, that's what I'm always telling people too. Like if they hit a roadblock or something, they're trying to integrate. I always point them back to the Real Earth Histories group because that's all. Somebody put a YouTube video up when I first came in, and it was a compilation of like her just talking about the histories, just back to back, just. Uh, without any other subjects and it was really powerful for me to get have cellular memory to come online have my own memory you know and experiences things from the past that was something that I really needed before moving forward into into flame body and all the free techniques that were on s right press so yeah memory definitely your own experiences like you yeah. can't just do this like verbatim stuff and try to memorize this it's got to have substance it's got to have something some authenticity in it or just don't do it maybe you don't need to do it you know but yeah if, if people you know, are kind of stuck with um, 
the techniques of even doing a technique first, I think histories has been extremely beneficial in my experience. Yeah. I believe so, yeah. yeah. And like you said, like the Aztec thing for you, there were some memories that came back with that too. Something you tapped into. Yeah, just just like a certain portion of it, like um, an event, you know, like that's very... That I guess was still encoded in me that's, you know, coming out now at this point in time once I got into KS. Something you can probably explore more in the future, too. Yeah, I mean, I actually have a shirt that's kind of like Aztec out of for some reason, you know, like. <laughs> Let me see it. Like an alligator, kind of like a tribal. Oh, you know, yeah. Bro. It's like one of those masks that they yeah. wear, the ritual stuff, yeah. Yeah. Rept reptile reptilian guy that's awesome what has been the most important dream since finding chaos for you um i think i covered earlier was you know that dream when i guess i mean i would assume it was like another like another version of myself you know i was a guardian and i was telling someone or showing them you know what what they're gonna do in this incarnation and you know and i remember these two words that came up was um limited time that like, just kept popping up like limited time limited time you know it just kept like and i you know i still i i woke up that night i think i woke up like at three in the morning and i wrote it down because they just woke me up like the whole dream just like you no know, <laughs> made me remember something almost like expedited it's a limited time like something just pushing and get this now or urgency type thing. Yeah. Okay. Is that accurate? Is something like the the spirit of it, of the dream? Because you said limited time. Yeah, limited time. Um, just kept popping up like limited time. You know, it, it, it it'll. I think it correlates a lot with the whole host. You know, going on now. Just, I mean, we don't have the, all the time now. We kind of in the in the in the particular time frame that we have to get things done if you know if we want to get to median earth and you know expedite our our trip back home have you ever thought about like if because i mean i was going to ask you this too about the crystal caverns being mm. in her words locked down how does that make mm -hmm. you feel like we don't have access to something we're supposed to have access to right now i mean this happened many times in many lifetimes it's just not even a surprise to me like i'm not really like freaked out over anything i'm just like oh okay like you know the, the thing is like how can we you know in the meantime you know try to adapt and you know connect ourselves with source more i believe is just that's the key just connecting internally instead of externally because that's, that's always been something that's been uh abused that's been exploited in our in our race this external deity people that people that were that's pushed so right now i'm pushing more towards like internal internalization of information and going through me instead of externally have you thought about like if because I, I from my understanding if things don't go well it's evac it's like yeah. i think it's called yeah. shield pull and they just pull the entire uh, um indigo shield whatever can come with the and that's it and, and yeah. i think there's plasma craft involved and last time that stuff happened was the electric wars if i'm not mistaken and there's mm, big, yeah, big yeah. huge plasma ships that were just <laughs> bouncing plasma off each other and it, it wasn't pretty you know it wasn't good <laughs> yeah, it was, it was catastrophic. <laughs> right have you felt any of that possibly an outcome in this Do you have any ripples of any events like that anything i mean we can't say None of this stuff could happen because, you know, the the people that are occupying this this planet right now right. are very devious and they're always trying to find ways to, I guess, put us in a state of, you know, fear and 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 um, forgiveness, forget forgetfulness. My bad. Um, so right now we we can't say it will won't happen but we always have to be aware and prepare for any kind of catastrophic catastrophic event that could concur within this whole you know split going on now
best to be prepared just in case, right? Yeah, it's yeah. always going to be have two options. You know, you can't just stick with one because you know what if what if that's the thing. What if this happens all of a sudden and we have to go like right now? Right. Yeah, I keep getting like visuals of it, and it doesn't seem like a, a pleasant experience. You know, to just be pulled to whatever quantum can go and you think about parallel earth two-thirds of our quantum has been locked up there and that's what flame body was about and stuff and we've got one third yeah. here so shield pull of one third of the original and then only if what of that one third can make it out of it it's like what are we going to look like when we get back it's going to be swiss cheese stuff i mean <laughs> it's not yeah, pretty that's very <laughs> how that's much memories point. are going to be intact it's like how much of us are going just i don't know it's a lot but i do feel accretion levels are picking up i'm accreting more i feel more whole like there's something happening alongside all this too we can't help but feel that's going to have a positive outcome i've had my own visions of kind of the ending in this too i think you kind of need that you need to have a sense of the ending to be able to pull it through it you need to be able yeah. to have some glimpses of it so. So it's a good place to close. Closing thoughts, messages for other newcomers, people in chaos or in the world. I mean, to anyone listening, um, I just always advise people to use discernment and, you know, the chaos and some of the people as well that are trying to exploit the information to monetize it and kind of just stick to one certain subject to just keep milking it and whatnot. But, um, yeah, just, you know, try to stay connected you know, internally, try to just, you know, focus, you know, don't lose your heads over this whole mess because it'll pass, you know, it's just, just a phase that unfortunately we have to go through as, as a whole collective and as a whole community. And, and within time, we're going to start seeing things, you know, better themselves, things more, you know, in tune with, with, you know, an organic timeline, to say the least. So yeah, it's just... Right? Yeah, that's just one thing that just to, to stay forward, to just to look look ahead and don't focus on you know, what happened in the past because it might just bring more traumas and bring more more fragmentation within the own within within your own template. So just you know stay in zero point. That's one thing that's always been told to me, and you know one thing I've always told myself: just stay centered and you know be discerning. Absolutely. 100% agreed. I'd like to actually expand on that, too. Um, there was a workshop called The Light and the Shadow, I believe it was. And it was a real, it was just like probably two hours long, just one DVD. And there was a Q&A on this. One of the guys in the audience, I think this was in New York when she was still doing the seminar things, the expo thing. And he asked, like, you know, you mentioned all these dire uh, circumstances or, or scenarios that were kind of coming up on but yet you sound so positive that we're going to make this like what is this like and she <laughs> says I have to she said I have to that's how precise this is is if I go off into that it's actually drawing it to my to my energy into my timeline and that's really what all this work is about is kind of pointing that out of um attention goes energy flows type thing you know all these yeah. sayings out there about the law of attraction and that's kind of where we're at right now like we, it's getting more and more narrow i say that i feel more capacity and getting more whole but yet at the same time it, it really is getting more narrow like you have to watch your integrity with everything everything you got to be meticulous or impeccable is the word right now yeah, impeccable. <laughs> yeah. yeah i think that's an a and r also all right, Ivan Rodriguez, thank you so much for joining us. One of the shortest interviews I've done in a while. I appreciate it. It's packed, though. Right. Yeah, awesome. I like it, yeah. yeah appreciate, I appreciate you having me on the podcast. Okay. We'll do a follow-up after some more workshops and stuff, too. All right, appreciate it.